What's up? What's up, everybody? I'm trying not to intro the show the same way. You just did. You said, what's up? What's <laughs> well, up, everybody? I, I, but I didn't say episode, whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah. this no, week. no, no. It's fine. No, that was never the part that oh, I was Oh, it was just about. the very beginning. It's the oh, what's up, what's shoot. up. You say okay, the what's okay. up, what's up every time. That's what I was <laughs> getting on about. <laughs> Damn, okay. I got I to gotta, I gotta start much differently next time. <laughs> I love how you tried not to do it, but you <laughs> <laughs> it's such a habit. It's such a habit. I well, love it. <laughs> welcome, everybody, to Spoiler <laughs> Alerts number 29. Uh, I'm Chan V and Eloheim E. My Diction here joining me. What's up, fellas? Oh, hi. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I've, people are going to be in the chat saying, like, is this dude high? Because my eyes are red. It's like, no, I woke up 10 minutes ago. Fuck you a lot. <laughs> Wow. People are going to say the wow. same about me, but a little paranoid here. No, no, no. No, <laughs> uh, no I um I'm I'm tired. I'm just like exhausted. Uh we went on a 12-hour fishing trip yesterday. Oh, one of my one of my mods is in town. So uh we decided to go out on the boat and it was a really good time, but Cora and I were junie-less the night before cuz my dad, you know, uh we took uh, her over to Oh, her junie-less. Yeah, so no we you're stayed tired. up. I got you. We stayed up all night until uh, we had to. We had to leave here at like three thirty in the morning to be on the boat by like six. So we had to pick yeah. some people up. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. So we didn't sleep the night before, and then we went and got on a twelve-hour fucking fishing boat. Got done with that and got home last night, and then uh, tried to crash but couldn't. So it's just like I'm just really tired, and my stomach's not feeling well. So I'm just like Bleh, right now. So yeah, but it was a good. It was a good trip. Cora caught, I told you guys this before the show, but just for everybody else who's here, Cora caught the biggest grouper on the boat within like <laughs> 10 minutes of fishing and ended up winning like 300 fucking bucks because it's the first uh, day of red snapper here in Florida uh, that you can actually fish them. So there was like 75 fishermen on the boat and they, these guys are like serious. These are the guys that like bring their own rods, <laughs> they got their the, own like tackle. They get the like the actual automated rods too, right? That that automatically pull in real stuff in. And, and yeah, like they that. had all sorts of yeah, gadgets yeah, yeah. and stuff. We're using the rods that are right there on the boat, you know, that they <laughs> supply to us. The, the bait they ones. supply to us, yeah. you know. Anyway, so she caught this just gigantic grouper, and we had made a bet that uh, whoever caught the biggest fish between me and her, she would either have to cook me dinner uh, three times, whatever I want, or I'd have to drive the car three times whenever she would want. So drive because I never car. drive, I never drive like ever, <laughs> like she drives okay. everywhere. So, uh, so she won immediately and in spectacular fashion, making everyone look like a fucking noob. And then I had to drive home, uh, from, from, from the trip. <laughs> oh man. Because that's I lost. Brutal. She was like, she was like, number one. She's like, I want to go ahead and use one of my three drivings to go ahead and ask you to drive. My three oh. drivings. <laughs> is the so, is the dock and the port close to your house, or is it nah, pretty far? I mean, it's not super far, but it's like yeah. a, I, I would say an hour drive, longer oh, push traffic. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it's it's a little bit of a drive, but not too bad. But yeah, it was it was super fun. I caught a mangrove snapper that was that was of uh, of reasonable size. I think it was like the third biggest nice uh, mangrove snapper. So I've, I've been fishing. Only a handful of times in my <laughs> life, um, me and my dad would go out and, and go fishing sometimes. Never caught anything. And then one day when I was in grade school, me and my friend, uh, I forget his name. I think his name was James or something. Josh. Some of the J. We, we, were, we were hanging out. Like at, he came over to my house to like have a, like a play date. And we went down to the creek by my house. And we started wandering around in the creek and stuff and flashing, having fun. And then we saw a giant trout in this little patch of like a pond that was like only like knee deep. And so we're like, oh shit, let's catch it. <laughs> and then we, uh, and so we like, we used like, so we found stuff around there like sticks. And then we found this like half of a basket that was thrown in there and we drove it to the shallow end and then like grabbed it and put it in the, in the basket. We caught it barehanded and we both felt super manly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, like I, I reached in, grabbed it and tossed it into the basket and stuff. <laughs> And and then we, we awesome. went back to, to my house. And my mom was super pissed because we were covered in water and like our clothes were ruined. And we brought home a fish she did not want to fucking deal with. The ugliest fish <laughs> so I've ever seen. She completely, yeah, she completely deflated our, our, our like our like our manliness. We felt so manly. Like we caught a fish with our bare hands. And she was like, <laughs> Nicholas, 
what did you do? Look at you. <laughs> You're soaking wet. His parents are coming to pick him up, and they you have to explain this to them. Like, <laughs> listen, Diction, you were born in the wrong time. It, exactly. Like every civilization yeah. and culture before this one, you know, in the last thousands of years, would have appreciated the shit out of you coming home. Dude, if I did that during right. the Great Depression, yeah, right. yeah. If I was alive during the Great Depression, I would have been a fucking hero for a whole town. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you for a whole town, for a whole, for a whole town, town, you would have been a hero. We all would have had like a sale Share, to eat that night, my friends. <laughs> yeah, you might as well have been Jesus at that point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fucking oh, hilarious man. uh yeah well i don't know we had a good time I, like I, and we're not big like fishing fishing like i don't own a rod i don't know you know anything yeah. like that but right. it's fun i mean to go out on a boat have a few beers hang out with people and you know catch some some big ass fish is super fun and plus we got to take like i said we got like a shit ton of snapper and grouper meat now that mm -hmm. are just sitting in our our you know refrigerator so you gotta eat it soon honestly, though man it's, it's best that? when it's fresh right so you gotta eat yeah. that stuff quick yeah <laughs> yeah well like Cora right actually core has gone she's gone for she's gone she's never coming back she's I don't gone know. guys <laughs> she's gone for uh like a few <laughs> weeks uh my my mom is giving us her uh suburban or sorry not suburban i always want to say suburban it's uh another what it's a, it's a sequoia sequoia that's it <laughs> because we because we, uh Corey got an accident a, a couple months ago oh, and we lost shoot. our car. We've been using her mom's car, but it's a it's a piece of shit. I mean, we're thankful to use it, but it's it's really, really shitty. Uh, like one of the windows is like taped up with duct tape because oh, it will man. fall down. Uh, but anyway, so she's up. She's going up north to spend time with my mom and have Junie spend time with, you know, uh, my, my parents so that she gets some time with grandma. And then she's grabbing the car, visiting her mom and then coming back. So I've got the next two weeks and I'm Cora and Junie list. So. I'm just gonna be streaming a shit ton, um, because yeah. I got nothing else Dream to early do. And play Party games at Ello's house. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to come over, bring the keg. It's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be. I'll just be streaming a lot and hanging out. So if you watch my stream normally, we'll we'll be hanging out quite a bit the next couple of weeks, just because I don't got anything else so, to do till E3. So what you're saying is we should do some kind of five season series on this. On this show, during that, this night. would be the time, man. This <laughs> the, is that what you're time. saying? <laughs> the leftovers, all three seasons. Oh my god, do it! Let's too, let's no, fucking that do would it, be man. like thirty so, hours. No, that, that would be the longest show of our of our of our run because we would have so much to talk about. <laughs> true, true. But let's get, I guess, to what we're going to be talking about this week, which is Silicon Valley seasons one and two. For those of you that probably keep up with Silicon Valley, you guys probably know it's on season four right now, but. We, you know, we can only do so many episodes in one week, and uh, it's always good to do something that we know a lot of people have watched. Season one, season two are likely one of those things, especially with them being a uh, very short popular episodes. show. Yeah, very, very, very popular, popular show, show on HBO. So, uh, yeah, how should we start this? Uh, well, you know, why don't you explain just in case yeah. people are listening? Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. So the show um, is, or at least what we do with this, is we just dive in to whatever we're doing this week. So Silicon Valley, we'll just be talking about everything uh just with those two seasons spoiling things so if you haven't seen the the two seasons and want to watch it just mute us and keep us up keep us going <laughs> at least visually for yourselves but yeah that's what we do we just talk about all the episodes anything that we thought was good or bad sometimes a little bit of too much of one side or the other but <laughs> it's mostly deservingly uh but yeah, with Silicon Valley, it's a show that's based on Silicon Valley, of course, and just the tech industry, especially in the West Coast there. And with startups, you know, the main characters are, are all working in a startup, and and um, you know, it's it's written by it's got a, Mike it's, got a, it's got a Google, yeah, a Google like, element like, to it. And, it's called uh, Hooli, but it's it's definitely fucking Google. <laughs> yeah, their campus looks identical with like fucking like little little carts people drive around, and there's like. You know, you could it's go total up to parody. a vending machine yeah. and get an entire like Indian dish or something. Like, there's, what is it? A sleep pod or like a accurate. sleep pod? That's right. <laughs> I've, I've That's been to the right. Twitch HQ many times over the last six years, from their first office to the one they have now, and that this show is very accurate. When they, I mean, they get their office in the second season, right? For Pied Piper. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah. Brief. So. They briefly have an actual office. Yeah, and that is straight up what Twitch HQ looks like, like the like to the T, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You don't get a lot of shows that that 
are making fun of like Silicon Valley, like the actual like <laughs> location area. It's kind of yeah. hard, right? When you think about it's, it, it's it's difficult to make fun of and like find good humor in such a very specialized area of the world. You know, I like mean, it's, it's it's easy to it's, take jabs at it. And like, especially with like, you know, like all the apps that come out that are fucking useless and like people think they're <laughs> going to be like game changers. Yeah. And I like the show because it, it does that every so often, but it's never like gratuitous, right? Like they never like, oh, just like, oh, I've got this app that does this thing and that thing. And they're like, that's a useless app. Get out of my face. Like they only, they've only the done that a couple app. of times. <laughs> the, the bro app. app like, n- n- yeah. Nip alert. Nip alert. <laughs> nip alert. Nip alert. Yeah. 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 It shows you nip where alert. the closest nearby hard nipples are. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's just, it's funny because um, it's hard to bridge that gap between somebody who doesn't know anything about tech or about yep. Silicon Valley and making it funny for those people and also making it interesting and uh, even accurate for people who are in this, in the space, just because uh, I know that those are probably some of the most nitpicky motherfuckers there are out yeah. there. Like uh, tech engineers, you know, Fuck uh, you, nerd Ello. culture in, in general <laughs> are some of the most, you know, nitpicky <laughs> types. So I can imagine somebody in, in, in Silicon Valley watching the show and being like, that's not how it is or oh that is how it is or oh ho, ho, you know like that kind of thing and, like really getting down like that code isn't right that there was have, like brackets instead of you know yeah. uh parentheses in that line we used of code. to do like <laughs> back when everyone out lived out here in the bay area they all moved like renee and, and all them we would have we would get together and watch game of thrones and then silicon valley would come on right after that so we'd watch silicon valley and so it, i'd watch it with like my friends who work at twitch or they work uh in the industry in San Francisco, and they never once said they never once said like bullshit. Like they're all like, no, it's I would like, look at them. I would look accurate. at them, and they'd be like, they're like, yep, yep. yep I mean, they don't go into de- <laughs> super crazy details. I mean, I think, I think maybe the closest thing they talk about is like you see some of the compression algorithms and things like that. But outside yeah. of that, they're just talking about very very high level. Oh, things apparently that that, that whole mm-hmm. diagram of of the of the the dicks of the yeah. jack yep. session yep. is actually accurate. Like they actually yeah. like had like a, 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 I don't know what he was specializing in, but he came in and drew up that entire diagram. And apparently, it's scientific. A physicist. Accurate. That's <laughs> a world class physicist. Get, yeah, he was like, this is how you can get into a room and uh, full of dudes to jack each other off, uh, and 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 no one gets left behind. And the most optimal, yeah. like, yeah. like well, the most gonna, optimal, you know, like a yeah. hundred. Oh, we have to talk dudes, about that. You have to jock them. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that is, scene. Okay. That, that is so that the scene. Best scene. Ever. That is that scene is very good, and I it remember is. before I watched the show, my brother sent me that scene, and that was the scene that made me watch the show. He was like, "You got to check out the show. Watch this scene." I was like, "Okay, that was pretty fucking hilarious. The most elaborate dick mm-hmm. joke of all time." Like, yeah, it took <laughs> it, it took it's, fourteen. It took fourteen yeah. hours to shoot that that in its entirety. <laughs> Just that joke took fourteen hours to shoot everything that came with that joke. Came with that joke. I remember the <laughs> night. <laughs> I remember the night it aired, and Kamel Nanjiani tweeted like, "You're gonna watch tonight. Want to watch tonight's episode? We shot the most drooling dick joke in all of like like." TV history, and so, I was like, "Yeah, no, I well, fucking so, did." So, <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> you know, it, it was. It's probably one of the best things I've ever seen, actually. On TV. <laughs> no, I mean, personally, no, seriously, it's, personally, I think it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen, and it's, it's honestly like a kind of like a an amalgamation of what Silicon Valley is. Yep. a bunch of people jacking each other off constantly. Like, no, but that's like it's, what, yeah. like not it's in a bad way. Things. It's but they're, the... <laughs> they live in their own world and they don't know what's going on in the rest of America, really. No, All it's, they it's know not... is this industry and like what it's they do. It's not that. It's not that. I mean, it, the reason why, I mean, this, for first off, this show is like perfect, like for me. I mean, because it's, I mean, it's completely yeah. geek culture. There's so many I dicks. Mean, he loves dicks. No, it's not dicks. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm a programmer. I, you know, I, I've done the startup thing. I mean, I had a startup that was based in Los, Los Altos for. A while and so i know silicon valley really well and i know a lot of people that work for you know the googles and ebays and and everywhere so anyways this this show is is specifically i'm the perfect demographic for so that dick that dick uh joke scene was something that just i could totally relate to because there are many many nights where we'll come up with shit where it's like guys you know like you know it kind of starts off as uh would you would you rather do this or would you rather do this? You know, he starts as one of those games, right? Like, would you, you know, rather go 
you know, screw an animal or, you know, you know, th those type of things. Right. And then it quickly becomes like, uh, you know what, let's, let's do a programming contest like really quick right now. It's like, okay, who can, who can do, who can win a rock, paper, scissors contest? Like who can write the best algorithm to, to win a rock, paper, scissors contest, you know, given that, that we have, you know, some kind of engine that, that acts as the, you know, the, the mechanic, just the way to actually, you know, have the game played. And then it quickly becomes like ridiculous talks that I've, we've never talked about how to jack off an entire room of 800 people, but it definitely gets into those. Well, I'm not interested. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we've never gotten to that kind of point, but these type of talks are like things you can just totally see. I, I mean, I can totally relate to with just a group of engineer friends and, and just trying to come up with the best way to, to, uh, you know, like just what the most efficient way to do something is. So well, anyways, that it, dick joke was so perfect. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. <laughs> Well, it's not unlike it's not unlike any other group of guys getting around and talking about bullshit. You know, it like, is. It's yeah. just more geeky bullshit. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just and they, they actually get yeah. results. They get results. <laughs> <I know. laughs> they get they get have results. the hard they have the hard math and the stats to make it work. Whatever they're fucking bullshit. Well, that's the about. beauty of it, right? It's like it's yeah, actually yeah. smart shit too. So. It's yeah, he's so like, yeah, funny. I love that scene where he says, where he's like, they're getting real serious about it. He's like, well, we would have to find people of the same height, you know, so that they're <laughs> lined up. And then uh, Guilfoyle was like, no, actually, we just need to find people who have the same uh, uh, dick to ground ratio. We'll call that D2G. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. not, you know, it's like, it's not about the height of the person, yeah. it's about the dick to the ground. Exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly. Oh, and like, then they take really in all the different accounts, right? It's like, if it's, if it's uh, what was he saying? If if uh, if one of them's a little bit more like thicker, it's girth or something like that, right? And they were going like, girth was the, girth it's was like, oh yeah, it would be harder. It definitely yeah, would it be would, harder. We gotta take into girth. As <laughs> exactly, <a> yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, that that joke was oh, that would man, thing. I remember so watching good. that and just cracking up without any context whatsoever. Just seeing a bunch of nerds get around trying to. That find was out like the, the last episode of the first out. season. Yeah, yeah it was. I had no idea what the why the fuck they would talk about that. Yeah, yeah. And I then like no even idea. in the context, like it was like it worked with the story that was going on in that episode particularly because they're at tech crunch or whatever yeah and well, that, you, you know what leads him to find out the uh the you know the the the, the, out, the wise man yeah, yeah the wise yeah. Well, you know what's funny about that too it just that specific scene is that you know for tech crunch disrupt you'd never make a a crazy decision you know a few hours before the presentation like that oh, yeah. but but for things like hackathons you would Sometimes people in hackathons literally just trash whatever they've been doing because hackathons are usually 24 hours, 48 hours type of thing. They'll literally trash something and put something together in a couple of hours and then present it, you know, in front of all the judges and things like that. So um, it was pretty funny that he, he they ended up doing that. And, and but tech disrupt is like another level. I mean, that's actually a, a very, yeah. a very prestigious thing. As, I, see, and here's the thing is that, like, I, I'm, I'm now in the last four years part of, like, the video game industry, right? Yeah. But, I mean, if you ask me anything about development or programming or anything like that, I'd be like, I have no fucking idea. I know that when I look at a screen, it looks like Dwarf Fortress to me. That's about all I know. Dwarf have, you, Fortress. have you ever played? Have you ever played Dwarf Fortress? No, I've never it's, seen it. Look up an yeah. image of Dwarf Fortress, and that's what literally what code looks like to me every time. Because it's basically what it is—just a bunch of fucking symbols on a screen, put in a certain way. Uh, but it, it's it's funny because even though I may not understand anything about oh, programming or developing <laughs> or anything like that, okay. it's it's relatable because there's so many people in this industry. There's so much like overlap between technology and what we do that I can easily see where a lot of these jokes are spawning from and coming from. Like uh, for instance, there's been times where um, like in Vegas last year, uh, Amazon threw like a big uh, party at one of the clubs after the Amazon champions of fire program that we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was going to be like, Tony Hawk was going to be there. Well, Tony Hawk was there. Uh, uh, Chuck Liddell. And like, I went there in like sandals and like jeans and like a t shirt. <laughs> and like, this is like a serious club and they've got movie stars going around and like we've got bottle service, and everything. And I've never felt more out of place than in this moment. But this sort of over the top, super indulgent, like we've just got tons of money that we can just have stars show up. So like, in that first scene where this guy like, <laughs> right. got hit rock 
And it's like, I'm Kid Rock. <laughs> it's like, everybody get into this. And nobody gives a fuck because nobody gives a fuck about all the stars because it's just vanity at that point, right? Yeah. It's just complete vanity. And like, I think Kid Rock even is like, man, fuck these people. You know? Well, well <laughs> even like, even like, in the, really the, the baseball stadium, too. It's just like complete waste of of uh that type of what whatever event right where you're like having some pitcher from the san francisco giants like pitching to you you know you could actually yeah. try to hit a major league baseball pitcher and there's it's completely wasted on a bunch of nerds yeah and so so like it's funny it's funny to me in different ways just because i see like the baby form of right. this you know kind of in our industry and uh i don't know i just crack up every time that they do just something super vain and just like uh like totally out of nowhere like uh in, in the presentation for tech crunch at the end of season one yeah. uh G- gavin belson's like you know he does this beautiful pitch and their wiseman scores perfect he's like we've got the technology we've got the power and we've also got shakira it's but it's so true oh see, but, that's but the it's thing. true that's the it's, funny thing about it's it it's so like it's true, true. Yeah. people don't even yeah. understand how true it is because we we actually got screwed one time because of something like exactly like that because we we did it we did an at&t hackathon like five i don't even remember how many years ago it was but we did at&t hackathon just long story short, we had a better product, way cooler product with uh, the um, the watches. When the watches were first coming out, we made an app for it, and um, they, with the the team that we ended up losing to, ended up presenting with these very attractive female <laughs> female presenters, and in the end, the audience was the ones that were voting for it, and they they ended up winning because of that. And so, one thing that we learned from then on is that if we ever do a hackathon, we actually have to have specific people that present, and and uh, that's actually part of the entire contest. So when I when we were watching that, I was like, oh my god, this is so so uh, so true. But actually, at, at the TechCrunch Disrupt though, they actually have that panel of judges. So if I we would have the panel of judges, we would have won. But unfortunately, if you have the the entire audience vote, then having an actual presenter that's you know really good doesn't have to be just female. But I'm just saying, like if you have, if you have like a strategy for presenting, it's uh, really really popular, uh, really really important. Yeah, getting so. a showmanship because like Steve Jobs kind of set the bar. We had a good showmanship too. Like we had jokes. Like we literally worked hours on even the presentation. And we had the crowd laughing and stuff like that, and we still lost. And I remember afterwards, the AT and T execs, like all the vice presidents and things, were, were there. They're like, "You guys got jobbed, dude. Totally got jobbed because like <laughs> we all thought you guys had like a way better product." And we were like, oh, "I know. It cost us like Listen, twenty thousand dollars, dude. It, was crazy. it doesn't matter how dude. smart you are, Chin. You're never gonna beat boobies. <laughs> I know. It's okay, you're never gonna it's beat so true. Boobies. You could come it's up so to me with true. a cure for cancer. If there was a pair of tits in front of me, I might not listen to you. All right? I, I, I <laughs> might not. I want to sound sexist, but, man, there's, there's definitely something to that. Something to that, man. But they, they, they kind of go in on that. They make a lot of humor about that, too, about, like, yeah. um, they, they basically treat every other normal living person that isn't a programmer or isn't a coder as, like, livestock. Like, they're idiots. <laughs> like they're just absolute idiots. Like like the amount of hubris and and uh, and uh, just again vanity in the show is fucking hilarious. <laughs> because like you telling the story, you know, like oh we got done the vote, you know, the audience voted, blah blah blah. Like to them it would be like we gave like our best ideas to a bunch of fucking idiots, and then they had to vote <laughs> right. on, you know, like and then they vote <laughs> right. on. It's like this is the dumbest competition in the world. Uh, but that that's I, I think that's what makes it so funny and, and relatable to regular, you know, just like regular viewing folks, if you will, uh, just because the you can you get that kind of pompousness from people like that on the other side, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. like like you can you can mm-hmm. feel that sort of pompous vibe coming from uh, a lot. Of, and I felt, it, you know, just being in this industry from a lot of people who are kind of higher up or are known for their good ideas or, you know, their unique thinking. Um, it's something to be celebrated, but it's just, it's just super funny. It's almost like a complete I, role reversal too, from like the, like the jocks, you know, it, used right, to be in charge of exactly. high school, right. you know, and now it's like the nerds rule the world. I think he even says in that in episode one, he's like, you know, uh, uh, for the last thousands of years, we've all been made fun <laughs> of for how smart we are. And, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal, but now that we're living in an age of technology, like we're the Vikings of today. 
You know, is what he says. Like, <laughs> we're the ones who can change the world. We're finally at the forefront, and all those jocks are, you know, they're the fucking nerds now. <laughs> you know, like we can make fun <laughs> yeah, of them. One, one. I think this was like three threes ago. It was like the last night. There were no parties happening, so we're we're all hanging out in the uh one of the hotels next to the convention center that has this giant fucking like bar area and like a couple of shops and stuff. And so we're all hanging out and we're just being loud and obnoxious and drunk and vulgar as all hell <laughs> and sitting right next to us. Uh, it was, was Jonathan blow. The guy who created braid and uh, the, what was this new game? The puzzle game with the, the we have to use lines and shit. Fuck, I know what you're talking about. He was in the documentary, wasn't he? The Indian yeah, game, the documentary, Indian yeah, game yeah. The documentary. So I had already seen that, so I kind of knew he was a very, like, pretty serious guy, mm -hmm. no bullshit, got really angry at fucking online trolls and stuff. So I was just, like, sitting there very aware that he was next to us, and he was working on his computer and stuff, and, like, he didn't say anything, he didn't even look at us, but I could just feel him being annoyed by us that entire fucking time. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like, we're just a bunch of fucking like shows that play video games for a living he he's the dude that makes them and then the, you know like it just it just felt like we were bothering him consistently but he just stayed there on his laptop that's like, because you are the on, guys that are making the, his, uh, the, uh, making his game popular so yeah 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 <laughs> he has to <laughs> the witness so that was the game the witness. the witness i wonder if any developers really do that like they sit around they're like man we make this great game now we got to Give it off. Absolutely. Dude, like, I'm fucking sure. Totally. Nerds that don't, totally. Know, don't know anything. Like, we're just going to have to give it to them. Like, <laughs> I can't imagine the conversation. Like they don't appreciate my out. freaking art artistry and how much work and how, how, how cool it was to actually do this engine. Dude, I love, you know? dude, I love Braid, man. That game, I, that was before Poor I even, I played Braid. that before Braid. I was Poor even Braid. streaming. It was a side scroller where you could rewind time. Mm hmm. So if you made a mistake, you could just press a button and rewind it. And um, I don't want to honestly. I, it's worth playing through. It's like five okay. hours long. It's it's it All gets right. a little challenging towards the end, but it's really beautiful. And the ending is one of the best plot twists I've ever seen in a video game. Like it's fucking crazy, and like okay. and makes you want to go back and play it again. Like I like, so I like that mechanic good. though. I like the whole rewind. You know that that aspect. Where yeah, can... yeah, and it's this like was... it's like you have to use yeah. it in very creative ways to right because you have to like get, get make it. a step you have to do you have to change some kind of state and then rewind again so that that state yeah like, yeah, yeah i know what you mean that's kind of i mean and, and, and he, it's it's important to mention too that it got so many accolades because it was one of the first 2d uh platformers to actually use that sort of mechanic i mean you see yeah. it more you see it more often now especially in like flash games and stuff like it's not un uncommon to see like a rewind mechanic in a 2d game yeah but at I mean, the time like, the persia did it and Yep. It was yep. it was yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it, it, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't utilized in the same way. Like you, you do it to I was like, oh fuck, I'm gonna fall and die. Okay, yeah. rewind. Let's try that. It wasn't again. A, it's that, not a that, redo, that right? It's actually there's very smart ways of, of having it incorporated into Yeah, no, it's like scene. it's integrated into the puzzle solving right. of the yeah, game. Absolutely. Prince of Persia had like a couple puzzles, but it was mostly just like, Oh god, I fucked up that platforming. Let's go back <laughs> and try it again. Right. Right. Yeah, I, can I can I do my rant about Silicon Valley now? Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay so sure. guys, for I was, once, I I don't have a rant about. He doesn't this. have a rant. Oh, I've got a rant about this. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. I like the show. I watch. I still watch it. I'm on. I'm, I'm caught up on season four. Mm. Um, I didn't put my fucking face. Yeah, in the yeah. Other shut, screen. Up, shut up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I like the show. It's not mind-blowingly hilarious it's not like on the on the like the office level or P parks and rec you know or uh, uh, arrested development even but it is funny it's interesting it's got good characters my biggest gripe and like i didn't really realize it until i watched the newest episode oh. in season four and i'm not gonna like spoil anything in there but it, it made me reflect on the show uh monica's character <sighs> has no fucking agency and I'm not here, I'm not like 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 screaming sexism, but straight up, her role in the show is to show up and drop plot bombs on the characters. Like there are so many times in even season one and two yeah. where she they'll, they'll be at the incubator arguing and telling dick jokes, and she'll show up and be like, guys, someone just pulled out their funding. Or guys, this just happened. Guys, guys you gotta get you gotta get on this problem. Yeah. And then and then, and then, aside from that, she was like kind of a will they, won't they, romantic. Yeah, I thought option. they were going to do something with that. They never did. Yeah, and it yeah. never went anywhere. And so, and like, and like, it just kind of continued. Like, she has a couple of her own side 
stories, like runner stories where her job's in peril, but like literally her only job is to fucking further the plot. And like when I realized that, I was like, man, that is shitty writing. That is sloppy, boring, lazy writing for a character. And she, and it doesn't help that she's like the one of the only constant female characters too among a bunch of dudes, right? Yeah. Um so that's like my biggest gripe about the show. Like I still like it, but it's like like realizing that made me dislike the show a little bit that, that she just does nothing except create plot points or in, in, inform the viewers about what's going to happen next you know yeah yeah i know i agree with that i definitely think that she's the weakest part of the show and i mean we're, we're not going to talk about season three and four here but for no. sure it's gotten worse you know i, I think the yeah. show they, they've, they've run out of i mean there's only so many so many of these kind of tech angles and funny things that you can talk about um, i mean the tech world's changing too right now so in some ways i feel like there's less of a uh, there's less of a polarity or there, it's less polarized between geeks i don't and just see the show people. lasting more than five seasons honestly yeah. like I, it's and probably tj miller up. pulled out he's yeah like, yeah he's the tj is like a so, huge part and the he's the, the funniest person in the show Wait, what? Like, hands yeah he's not yeah, doing he's, next season he's not doing he's next getting season. he's getting too apparently he's getting too famous he's getting a lot of movie offers like deadpool and shit like really blew him up and and also apparently he's a very difficult person to work with he gets drunk <laughs> yeah. and and then oh, destroys stuff on set and he and, looks like yeah. that kind of he got like, arrested he look during like he's shooting. like he got arrested <laughs> during shooting I think he, I believe he did. I, I when I read. Wow, the article, I didn't know that. You know, like he, yeah, he, he, he's a, I liked him a lot. Behind Field. <laughs> 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 Back when he when was, he was a nobody. Oh, HUD. Back when <laughs> back when he wasn't even famous enough to be more than a cameraman in a film. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's really all he was. Uh, it's it's funny because you can see that his character is always sort of got a twinge of the same guy. You know, like, he's mm -hmm. just one of those actors yeah. that doesn't go out of his scope specific, very often. Very like Seth rogan -ish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Seth Rogen. Mm -hmm. I mean, Seth Rogen's kind of, like, like when he was in a Obser uh, Observe and Report, like, that was a fucking, like, I, I, I hold that movie in high regard because that was Seth Rogen acting. He was yeah. doing a fucking taxi driver, sociopathic, really difficult to empathize with character like he was an anti-hero he wasn't just like we you know like the whole time can we get tangent here real quick to do the laugh <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it was like like that and then like tj miller is like he's funny he's serviceable but yeah like he plays basically the same character i think erlock erlock uh, he, he does more of a posh kind of like speaking pattern yeah mm -hmm. like he over enunciates a lot of words and stuff he like he because he thinks he's bigger than everyone in the room and so it's cool, but I'll like, yeah, at the same time, it's like, that's his, that's his thing. That's I'll his be on <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll you've got to be able to say, yeah, you've got to be able to say the name of your product during, during sex or during orgasm. Oh, yeah. not be weird. Ooh, I'll ooh, be ooh, I'll ooh, be ooh. Oh, Pied Piper. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm very serious. You know, hey, back to your, back to your rant real quick before we go any further. Uh, uh, I agree with you 100%. And, and again, I think it's even more obvious when you've watched into four seasons of the show and you go back and yeah, you start watching like, season one like, and two shit, like nothing changed with her yeah, like, she just kept yeah. doing the same thing it's and funny because bad I... for her because she's a good actress and she, she i feel like she can be funny but like she's her her character is not only only just there for, for plot development but also it's... she's all she's the the straight character right she she reacts to jokes she never tells them yeah yeah, yeah she, someone says yeah, something weird around her and she has the face or something she's like uh, okay and it's like yeah. that's what's, boring, man. Well, she's got she's got some witty like she's got some witty comments that she throws in there, you know, like like mm. uh, every now and then, just like a little insult or a little jab or a little whatever. Yeah. Like she knows how to keep up, but she's not the one cracking the. No, the I mean, like, like, I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to talk about this season, but she, like you said, she's she's totally worthless at this point in, in the plot, and I don't even know if they can do anything with her at this point. Like they trying could. to rekindle it, some kind of Richard. Like, <clears throat> love thing I mean, again it is, I, I, it's too late in my opinion i don't know it's but there was never like, a love there's nothing you ever to rekindle though because there like, was there, well there was yeah there was a spark he had a, though there, there was, was a spark, spark on her but, yeah and she kind of reciprocated and then nothing happened like, well she definitely yeah. did reciprocate but then they started working again they, and they used this this plot element where working together didn't allow them to you know, just pursue this but they did it in such a nonchalant way that nobody cared you know it 
it was like because when whenever um what was it aviga dropped out right like they dropped out the funding and pied pipers it's like a recurring thing right pipers in trouble and they're about to crash again that's when they were like oh let's go have some drinks you know like we can finally have drinks because we don't have to work together and then you know that all flipped around right and then now it's like uh, after the whole um tech dis tech crunch disrupt thing then they couldn't get together again and basically ever since then they never even touched on it um and yeah they barely get even interact anymore like her and yeah, Thomas, yeah, Thomas yeah. Middle did. like they barely ever talk it's who weird. by the way streams on twitch by the way he does i raided yeah. him one time and he didn't know what a raid was and he started getting i didn't know that nervous. really what does he play yeah uh i, I haven't I seen him streaming him. recently but he yeah, was back streaming. when i raided him recently yeah. okay yeah. Yeah, he's yeah he streams on Twitch. Uh, back back to Earth though. Um, so he's gone for season five. Yeah, yeah, I think just onward. Yeah, that's really tough because I, I think that he has one of the most interesting characters because it, it's it, he represents like the value that people can have without necessarily needing to be like uh in in a how am I gonna say this? He he's like the the charisma that can't be accumulated by programmers. You know, like, like he represents all the, like all the, the know-how in the, in the, uh, conversational skills and all that stuff that really sort of not to, you know, generalize or stereotype, but typically doesn't yeah. encompass a lot of people who jump into uh, a lot of the more engineering fields, you know? So he's kind of like, uh, he, I don't know, he, he makes things happen in ways that you don't really think about. And honestly, uh, maybe even Ehrlich himself would only think about, yeah. you know, well, like, we like can... I, I don't know. He, like he always just pulls them out of the fire sometimes in very unique, weird ways. Yeah. Like his value is there, but it's not necessarily tangible, you know, and it gives him a lot of leeway to be in and out of a lot of these stories or to work his way into deals or to become part of things or get a share or mm -hmm. whatever, just because again, his value isn't really like, you can't really calculate it but he does a lot. And you see that in the show, like he's constantly fixing problems like behind the scenes or doing this or that. And just these little weird quirky things. I think his character is probably one of the most interesting because it's, he's uh, like, he'll do, he'll, he'll, he, yeah, he, he'll be selfish for an entire episode. And then at the end of one, he'll do something selfless to help the company. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Like, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. Like, that he's, makes him an interesting character. Whereas Guilfoyle is just a dick all the time. And yeah, I like him. I, I love that character, but it's like, yeah, he never has a redeeming moment in the show, yeah. except for like when he fixes a problem in the tech part of it. You know, like he's always just kind of a dick. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Satan. Thanks, <laughs> he's Satan. Satan right? <laughs> no, er er Erlach is easily the most important character in this entire show. So, losing him is probably going to be the end of this this uh, series. And I mean, just look at look, look at the first season, right? I mean, the, the whole whole thing about negging. And going into each of these VCs and throwing his freaking testes on the yeah. desk. I mean, there's no other character that they could they could ever throw that type of of plot to, you know, or at least that type of uh, role to, right? And yeah. um, you know, just his whole self worth aspects, you know, like him questioning and that having to try to prove himself a lot of times, you know, and and like you said, you know, always being that kind of facilitator. I mean, he owns still owns that the house, right? He still owns the yeah. incubator essentially. I feel like they're gonna and, do some bullshit something or other where it's like Erlock's gone, his brother takes his place and they get another oh, actor God. to basically. You know, you know what? I don't think they're gonna shit, do like... is I don't think they're gonna do the whole <clears throat> I don't think it's gonna be that blatant. And that yeah, bad. it's not I mean, gonna. Be that Mike, it's got Mike Judd I, as as the fucking. You know how many times they tried to replace Michael Scott in the office after he left the show, dude? Like, yeah, but not, <laughs> but not when it was directed by Mike Judd. Judd, and, yeah. and, and the thing, the thing about him is that he is such a great character uh, person. Like, he is so in tune to characters, and a lot of the comedy that comes from him is all character comedy. That I'd have a hard time believing that. He would allow such an egregious like uh uh mishap you know like like to allow Ehrlich to go and then just kind of fill his shoes with like some random dude that we don't even know about seems totally unlike right uh my judge like it just it just doesn't make sense to me so if anything it's more likely that they that they try to shoehorn 
uh, that one super rich investor. Russ, guy. That's what I was going to say. Russ Hannigan. Yeah. I, th- yeah, I think they're going to try to get him. He's going to yeah. become like the Ehrlich because they did, they is, did bring him back briefly. So it's like, yeah. And he's still he popping up it. even in the new, you know, in the new stuff. But we're <clears> talking about, again, this is tough because we're talking about like season four stuff, you know, we're only supposed to stay on season, season one and two, you know, it's like, but he's awesome. Damn, that, that Russ character is pretty hilarious. Oh, he's, just, so. he's hysterical. Dude. I love him. <laughs> This guy yeah, fucks. This guy fucks. This guy totally fucks. It's like my favorite line. I say that all the time when I'm streaming now. Like I see somebody super nerdy or geeky, and I'm just like, this guy fucks. I think I said it just the other day. I think I, I was going through Friday the Thirteenth characters. I went past the yeah. little nerd guy, and I said, this guy fucks. Oh god, I forgot about the lawyer. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah lawyer. The, lawyer. Shit, the lawyer is like like disbarred and shit. Working, yeah. I love the lawyer. Works for he's free. Like he's amazing. amazing. But- Dude, the streaming the first episode character too. was like, oh, he's Silicon Valley. He's like 27 and like hyperactive and shit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. like the new lawyer is way more fascinating. Like, what <laughs> the fuck did he? What what the fuck has he done that it hasn't been arrested for? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the greatest lawyer because he's always doing time and he's always <laughs> he's always getting caught for like the most heinous shit. He knows like, what it's like behind bars. Exactly, so he's got living more of a, the life. He's know. got the experience, right? It's like if Mr. <laughs> Rogers were a creepy, weird criminal, but also a super good lawyer. Like that's who that guy is. It's just <laughs> Mr. Rogers. He reminds me of Mr. Rogers. Is how he looks a little bit like him. Yeah, is, you know. Yeah. yeah, come on. It's it's definitely there. But but that's that's the thing that this show really thrives on is characters. And it's mm-hmm. it's it, I mean, that's just like we said, it's my which makes the it. Monica thing even more like maybe she's supposed to be that. Maybe she is supposed to just be because there's but so then many that makes it worse than if she's the only female constant on the show and all she it's, does is further the plot. Then now I am I'm just spouting no, sexism. Like that's hold straight on. sexism right there. Hold on, hold on. There is a very logical very uh arguable defense here that especially right uh god (laughs) man (laughs) wow you really are me today i know you really like you really you really you're doing hey man like i'm giving you a gold star you're like (laughs) exactly you're tired you need a break i'll be the contrarian tonight good i like it i really like this role reversal um this is sexy uh, no, what I was going to say was there is a very a serious commentary and part of, you know, part of the com- uh, comedy and the culture is it's a very male driven uh, Silicon Valley. And there's a lot of guys and it's hard for a woman in that kind of environment and that kind of atmosphere. And I think that there may be an argument there for reflecting that in the character as this is really a boys club. I'm here as a supporting character. And this is a commentary on Silicon Valley and how it's mostly man driven. Now that that could be that could be said. Is that what they're going for? I have no idea. But from what I read, um, they definitely did try to take uh, enough time to explain that you know, hey, this is mostly this is mostly dudes. This is mostly an old an old boys club. This is about who knows who, and you don't see a lot of powerful uh, women in this scene very often not that they don't exist or that you know uh they're they're not welcome but it's definitely a male dominated uh culture it seems like and i think that that's what they try to get across in the show as well so maybe a little bit maybe to fault maybe uh uh they made you know some mistakes with her because she just becomes kind of a uh like you said like a not it's like the opposite of like a do sex machina like she doesn't create or you know solve problems like she just pops up and creates them uh, but yeah, it's a plot device. I agree. It is. It is lazy writing. But it could be. It could be that they want it like that on purpose. Yeah, if it was a commentary on the male-driven tech industry, I feel like they could have hit that point Done home. Yeah. Not, only, yeah. not only could they hit the point home, but they get, they should they should have also reversed it and given her character like something to fight for and to be more of a you know like like they they could have done a better job with that if if that was their intention you know yeah and you know we don't know honestly i was just sitting here thinking um we don't know much about her like i think that there's a couple episodes yep. where she shares a little bit of past but we don't know much about her and i started thinking you know we don't really know much about any of these people like they don't really jump in the past of or, or go back over i don't remember a flashback or anything in the show that has ever really like set these characters up for who they are today I think we just but sort of just, jump in and we just accept them as who they are. Yeah. And then we just kind of go, okay, we're on for the ride. But I think with her specifically, 
I think she would be an interesting character to kind of see why she is there, why she does what she does and, and try to give her a little bit of meaning, but they haven't. And I agree with you. I think that's probably the weakest part. And it was something that stuck out to me rewatching the first couple of seasons for sure was just how sort of asinine her character is and yeah. how unimportant, you know, like it's just, that's she's around, point. but I don't know why. That's a good point though. Like they, <laughs> they don't, they don't dig into the characters at all. And, and maybe you can make an argument that that's how they're going to extend the series is to, you know, maybe start digging in a bit. But to date, it's so funny because all these characters have so much flavor, but it's all, it's all just like in the moment type of things, right? Like, it's it's really driven about just the scenarios they're put in more so than than character development, you know. So at this point, they haven't developed the characters ever, like in a long time. After watching season one, have they really developed any of the characters? I mean, it's, they're the same uh, characters they were. Thomas Middleditch's character has gotten a lot more cocky and and confident. assertive. Yeah, he's yeah. a lot a lot more confident. Okay, okay. Um, I give you that. All right, that's about it. But that's it, right? <laughs> like, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that I think Ash, that, I think Ash bucks more. He gets laid more, I guess. Like, well, I mean, but Mike uh, Judge, I think, well, wrote this whole thing just to be more, you know, like Seinfeldish. You know, like it's just about scenarios more so than it is about it's a sitcom. The yeah, yeah, it's, it's not a sitcom, like it's exactly. like. Uh, like Parks and Rec, which really goes into their yeah. characters in deep, deep ways, right? And so, gives them background and gives them context. You know, it's like it's just like, here we go. Here's another basically thirty minute sketch. Yeah, like, yeah. So, well, I mean, you like, could you could comedy, jump so. in. The, yeah, you could. So that he they he really could dive into each of these characters and make quite like maybe two or three seasons out of that. Um, I will say, know. I think the biggest the biggest change of character is Big Head, though. He started out oh, not an idiot. Head. You know, he, he started out just as, like, the friend, and now they've made him into just an idiot. Like, he's just an oblivious <laughs> idiot now. It's and it's probably Pelican. one of the biggest character changes in the show, if you think about it. Because if you watch, like, season one and two, he doesn't he doesn't act or talk at all like he does uh, present day. He's like, barely in season one. Once he gets fired, like, he's he doesn't, he doesn't show up in the show for, like, episodes. On, yeah, like, until, but, like, but, until he gets that job at, at Huli hanging out on the roof. Like, they pay him not to do anything. It's weird because like he he starts out as the friend that he has, you know, you have to awkwardly kind of let go of, you know, like your childhood dreams of doing the things you want to do with your friends and realizing that your friend is actually holding you back, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of like cutting those ties loose, like in those in those interactions uh, uh, with the main character and stuff like that, you see that he's not dumb. He's just not on their level. He doesn't bring anything special. He's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none type thing, right? But the but the thing is, is that as the series goes and as he sort of leaves the house and takes up that job, he sort of becomes an informant, you know, in a way and lets right. them know what's going on with the with Nucleus. But uh, not long after that, like after that story is kind of done, actually like tech crunch basically into season two, Big Head just becomes like this oblivious idiot figure that uh, gets tossed around and given all these wonderful, crazy opportunities and things just by by proximity, not necessarily by merit or anything like that. So he just kind of fits that mold. Like suddenly he's just slurping away on his on his, you know, his big ass fucking the big slurpee. Gulp, slurpee. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. a big gulp. He's on the big gulp, <laughs> just, you know, sipping on it. And then people talk around him and he just goes, OK, all right. You know, whatever, where he used to actually have opinions and used to show feeling and all that stuff in the first season. He doesn't do that anymore. He's just like, uh, he's just like the idiot. He's just like the village idiot in the room that just kind of is always thrown into all these hilarious things just by proximity. Like I said, I, if you well, look you know, at this character, really, it changes a lot. It changes I, a lot. Actually, I think the character that's probably changed the most is Gal Gavin Belson. Um, that too. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, maybe in the first two seasons, pretty much the same character the entire time, but. You know, watching he's he's had a pretty seasons. interesting arc. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we're we're talking we're talking like newer season stuff already, but like, yeah, like he he he's he starts off as the fucking hand wringing villain, you know, for a long time, but then like his life, his bad decisions, and his cockiness start to fucking unravel his life over the course of the series in really serious ways, and I and I thought that made him a a, a fascinating like anti hero or like a villain yeah. character. Yeah, and what people and what people he doesn't win he like never actually wins like he thinks that he wins and they kind of frame it as if he's he's one step ahead but he always gets fucking pulled back down by his own hubris yeah i mean he he is he's like the the empire essentially right in, in this mm -hmm. this series and 
and it's interesting because all the things that they do are things that y you do see big fish strong arming you know the, the the small fish in the pond a lot of times like suing right and season one suing for oh, yeah. you know suing them and trying to lock them up in in fucking, the courts fucking bethesda that, that shit going happens. around finding games that have titles similar to theirs and just fucking issuing subpoenas left and right it's like dude bethesda <laughs> Calm the fuck down. You made Elder Scrolls <laughs> and you have you have Fallout. Shut the fuck up. Let people make games with the word "pray" in it. For the love of fucking God. Oh, like, that's that was, right. That pissed I forgot me that. off so much. It's like wow. "Pray to the God." It was a Kickstarter game that looked like it was like uh, a, a higher end. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Shadow of the Colossus, like a game that people revere and love for years. And now they get a new game that like has that framework. And it's got a cool title: "Pray to the Gods." Pray is in like I'm praying on you. Mm -hmm. And then fucking like like they, they get their Kickstarter, they're 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 on crunch time to get the game out, and then Bethesda's like, hey, you can't use the word prey in your title. It's like, fuck off, dude. <laughs> like your game is just called Prey. There's this prey to the gods. Like, there's no one's gonna make a mistake one for the other. Like well, it's never gonna happen. It just shows you how cutthroat the you know industry can be. It's it's but just that, like, that's, it's, that's what like I was just companies saying, run like, by lawyers, man. It's like, how can I respect you if that's the way you fucking operate? That is a great example for what I was saying earlier, though, where you can see shades of this stuff in yeah. our industry. It's oh, not yeah. at that kind of level of decadence and just outright fucking filthy ass rich money type, you know, shit. But you still see it. It's it's just like a shadow of itself. And that was one excellent, excellent example of that. <laughs> specifically so whenever i watch the show and i see gavin belson suing for this or this mm -hmm. these people suing for that or this uh, i look at stories like that about prey like you said and i'm just it kind of makes me laugh because i'm like oh yes i've seen this before you know, oh. Like, oh yeah oh, oh this old one. life reflecting art oh, how quaint <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's sort of true oh yes um, it's a, i mean it's, it's yeah. crazy i mean if you were to actually look to see how many lawsuits are actually out there for all the big companies it'd be shocking for you guys like like You'd google and apple EA and stuff again. i mean they literally have you know i don't even know tens maybe hundreds of lawsuits that are always going on i mean th these corporate yeah. lawyers are making shit loads of money it's like ridiculous and um, you know it's like you're you're getting you're you're doing lawsuits just as a defense for another lawsuit you know it's like it's posturing right like all right you sue me for this i'll sue you for this and then eventually they just go away. But again, the lawyers end up making money and nothing ends up coming out of it most of the time. But, it's um, fun to see like the innocence lost too. Yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, Richard at the beginning is just so meek and so unsure of himself and just, you know, starts vomiting when he has to talk. To oh, I love that and, part. God, yeah, I, I know. I, know, I do part. too. I yeah. love it. And, and I actually miss old Richard. I think that was probably one of the, some of the funniest parts, like, when he's there with uh uh what's his name gavin belson's rival the guy that died he actually died in real life yeah. and he had to take peter that. gregory oh, yeah. God, he, he was, was such peter an gregory. awesome character yeah, he he was the best. Awesome i character. loved his character well you got you get like uh peter gregory like when he's talking to peter gregory he gets nervous because he's just absolutely tearing him to shreds that he picks up the empty coffee mug on the table and pretends to sip it <laughs> and then he's yeah. like did you just pick up <laughs> a mug and pretend to sip it and he's like yes i did and he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, he gives him this look like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But that's like typical Richard, right? Like Richard just does the weirdest shit because he just gets nervous and like he's he's totally socially inept and like trying to navigate all this shit because he believes in his cool. product. And and it's hilarious, but we, we've lost a little bit of that. Uh, not again, trying to stay away from season three and four, which is so difficult in this conversation. I know. But uh, he's even towards, you know, like the end of season two, you know, you start to see him get more confident and everything. That's something he's working on. But I feel like it actually takes away from the comedy. The more confident he gets, he gets the yeah. less funny yeah. he becomes to me. Yeah, it does hurt um, his character and just how he how his role fits there. I mean, I, I loved it. So, I mean, I, the part I love most about Richard, at least in season one, is that it's it's very analogous to many many people out there like many people whether it's in the tech industry where you you make this awesome product and have no idea how business works or even just what you know taking this product and turning it into a business and then turning it into a billion dollar business right like those are are stages that you you, t you would go through uh, especially in silicon valley with startups and, and everything and yeah, you know, it's it's so perfect. It, they portray it so perfectly because you know Richard in this case is just that that guy that just 
oh, you know what? I came up with this awesome formula or this algorithm for compressing compression. Now, how do we actually make it into a business? You know, and that's what all the VCs like they care about, right? And that's kind of like yeah. the ultimate goal for a lot of folks. And for some folks, that's that is what they end up doing. They end up becoming like these billionaires. But then some folks, they just like, I don't really care about that, you know? I just like I just want to do what I do. And, you know, if if that means you know, giving up a lot of shares of whatever company or not even maybe not even making it's a company. The, uh, you know, it's who's like, the guy that did Napster? What's his name? Oh, uh, Sean Parker. Paul, Sean Parker, yeah, Sean Parker. Yeah, that like he he kind of set the standard for that attitude, like of make something cool that people want and just give it away for free. You know, eventually he sold out. Like he, fucking, <laughs> I mean, he's face. Yeah, he, he made a shitload he, of money on Facebook, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. He dicked out a lot of people of money on on Facebook. And stuff. Mm-hmm. But like from the, when he did Napster, he was just like, I made a music sharing app and I'm just gonna give it to people for free, and then got him into yeah. a lot of trouble. He spent like years of his life in courts, like fucking fighting the music industry and stuff. And it's like that. I feel like that inspired a whole generation of like, hey, let's just make some cool shit to give to people and like to connect us into. Yeah, I mean, it's very overwhelming. Like, there's an example in in the mobile space where, you know, the guy that made Flappy Bird, right? Um, Oh yeah, the developer in, in Vietnam, right? That made Flappy Bird didn't had no intentions of making their, you know, like Flappy Bird into this crazy successful game. And you can make an argument that's just like, well, if you didn't want it to be successful, then why'd you even, you know, put it up on, on uh, just all His the, all the app His reason for, for deleting it's... the game off the, off the app store was so bizarre. <laughs> and was. honestly, I'm not sure if it was, if it was real, if he was just like his lawyers told him to say that, or if he's just a weird person, but he's like, I, I didn't want people being addicted to my game. Which I is, actually, I think it was horseshit. real. Of course you do. No, of but course see, you want to make was... a game for people to play it for forever. Hopefully, like that's right. That's what right. you make games for, right? They want you want them to last. You want them to have shelf life. Well, so I mean, like it seemed really bizarre. It's like people are going to get too addicted to my game and it'll ruin their lives. Like, nah, yeah. this isn't WoW we're talking about, dude. It's a fucking it's Flappy Bird, man. It's Flappy Bird. Yeah, I mean, I remember him talking about, it, and that was definitely what, like one of the reasons he was giving it, and also just all the tweets and all the, you know, everything that was going on with the memes and Reddit and everything. I got to understand he, it he being overwhelming. Felt, yeah, for, he, he, he no, was like completely overwhelmed yeah. and, and thought that his game was ruining the world. Like he was interpreting some of the trolls as real, you know, real comments. And yeah. so he, he thought it was actually ruining the world and, that, and didn't want any, any part of it. And that's kind of why he took it down. So, um, I mean, there's no reason for like, why would the lawyers tell me? It's understandable. Like, just like, it, like his excuse no... seemed really fabricated and, and strange. Really? I just thought he was a very strange person, but it was an interesting, it, could be that too. it was an interesting story because of it. Um, but anyways, that's a good example of somebody who has no intentions of making this into a big business. You know, he's just made this cool thing that ended up just becoming viral and taking off and that it's very possible today, you know, which with, with all the social media and Reddit and everything. Um, and it can happen to folks that, that want it to happen. There's, there's mil- probably a million people that are trying to make it happen and they just can't make it happen. And then like, you know, sometimes it randomly happens to, to a guy that doesn't, doesn't want it to happen. And you, you just see this kind of crazy, interesting story. Uh, one of the, you know, kind of in, in kind of in line with that, but also segueing mm-hmm. a little bit, uh that's you know one of the overall themes of the show is you know how how smart ideas get bogged down by complete and utter bullshit exactly. Exactly. you know and and you see it in so many ways it's like we've got so much technology and we've had so many technology booms and you know uh in just the last you know 30 years but what we don't see everything that goes behind this how many great and fantastic ideas are out there like world changing ideas uh that never see the light of day just because of greed litigation uh ignorance you know mm-hmm. all sorts of things that get in the way of good ideas this this entire show is almost about that specifically these guys have something that is incredibly uh uh incredibly advanced you know they they figure out this thing they want to get it out to people but the people they're trying to get it out to are idiots and they don't understand <laughs> it they can't see how it's going to help their lives they everybody who's smart does see it but the people who are smart will either want what they have or want to stop them from achieving it you know it's like then greed plays a role and it's like all these different angles that we as human beings like 
uh, uh, have to deal with in order just to get an idea idea across to somebody or get a product made and, and again i keep bringing this back to streaming but it's what i know um and, and in, a, in a lesser way again shadowing into this industry you see a lot of that happening on twitch just like small bits of that as well people wanting to innovate but can't or wanting to do new things but nobody really understands it yet you know like there's all these you know and even people screwing each other over stealing ideas and uh i mean even when like uh trick to g had that whole uh legal thing about sub wars and wanting to trademark sub wars and the oh brand God, and yeah. you, you know what i mean like these things filter out into what we're doing now twitch is a nice community we all hold hands bleed purple unity day yay you know for the most part <laughs> we get along but but at the end of the day there's there's going to be people eventually that get into this space that are going to be cutthroat and it's already starting to happen and it, yeah. and it becomes a commentary on and not only just getting an idea past all these hurdles but also what the product is once it is past all these hurdles is it still the idea that that was originally uh you know uh thought up was is it is it even close you know they talk about pivoting people have to pivot you know their companies what started out as this idea becomes this idea and that's good or bad but the thing is is that there's so much that goes in the way of like a good idea and fostering that and even if you do have a good idea and even if you get past all these hurdles the product at the end of the day might not be anything what you imagined it would be it might not be what you want at all and it goes back to that whole like ayn ran like uh you know, like people who are passionate about, you just have to let them do their passion. You just got to give them space, give them resources and let them create too much compromise, too much people's investment, too much uh, people, you know, just getting involved Red in general. Yeah, well, this is, it really ruins ideas. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the the example that they give in the show with the compression algorithm is like a perfect one because, you know, you could look at it from the standpoint of um, you know, that you know, that algorithm actually can affect many, many different types of products, like can affect our lives in many, many different ways. They obviously are giving the examples of, you know, compressing video, compressing, you know, of music files and things like that, just because just the amount of data that's being created every day is filling up on all the storage spaces, right? And we actually won't even have the, the infrastructure to handle it. So, we actually need this, you know, we need to shrink down all the files by whatever eight X or, or an eighth or whatever it is. And so this type of algorithm is like, it, it's something that affects the world in every single way. And if you just presented it out there for free, like open source, then you would see like our, our world's changing much, much quicker. Now, the issue is, is that, you know, in almost any single business industry, even the medical field too, it is all about just who can have that billion dollar making idea and just like cons you know, consumerize it, right? Or, or create a single product, which, which totally limits it. And I mean, that's, like, that's a huge issue that we have. And there's only very, very few people that are willing to give billion dollar ideas out there for free to affect the world and you know, to make the world a better place. Uh, and, and medicine is like a pretty thing. Medicine in itself is supposed to be a, a, about improving humanity. And you have all of these, all of this research, which could help other, you know, research or at least accelerate research for all kinds of, of, uh, of cures for all kinds of sicknesses, are being just like completely secret. Like they're all, all, all just trying to to publish, right? And and make be the uh, or get um, accreditation for being the first person to discover this or discover that and discover that. So it, it's like such a selfish world right i mean that's that's kind of how it is and greed, man yeah, vanity it's and totally that way show and and that's part of the reason it makes it funny because it's so true to life you know like comedy comedy is 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 not always a reflection of reality but it definitely dabbles at the very least you know so mm -hmm. You, when you've got a show that that is like this and you see all these things it's relatable because you're like yeah fuck yeah that's exactly what fucking happens i think the medical field was a great example because you know how much could we really help people how what could we really offer to people in the ter in terms of of health and longevity if we just didn't have money involved in it if we didn't have all these you know uh i mean even politics and everything that goes into it you know, what could these ideas really be? But man, we create such a complicated construct for ourselves as human right. beings that we really limit our potential because there's so many, there's so much incentive out there that it, it, it convolutes things. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, a, you know, kind of a big idea to wrap your head around. And it's mm -hmm. funny that we should talk about it when it comes to the show. But that's <laughs> that's, total that's one of the driving, but that's one of the driving uh, factors in the show is just all the controversy, all the, the competition, all of the, uh, you know, there's every single roadblock that gets in the way keeps uh, the show interesting, you know, in a way it's, it's, it's sort of funny entertainment wise. It's great uh, for humanity. Eh, it's probably the, one of the worst things we're dealing with is fucking vanity and greed. Uh, but you know, that'll never change just because, you know, society, so that's society, yeah, society dictates yeah. it. You know, it's like, what, what is Richard supposed to do with it? The first thing everybody does with it, especially in Silicon Valley is you try to make it into a billion dollar company, you know, and that's, that's what everybody does. So that's what you're supposed to do. And then you can make the argument. It's like, if you give it away for free, then, other people are going to be basically taking it and trying to make a billion dollar company. So is, is that actually better, you know, like for you, or if you're looking at it from that standpoint, probably not. But if you look at, you know, holistically, it is better for, I think all of society in a way. I mean, you just have to remove your ego is yeah, the problem, yeah. you know, and a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people go into this to build something or create something so at the end of the day, they can go, oh, how smart, how wonderful that person is that they created this. And if you take away that incentive, you know, it even goes back to capitalism, you know, like you, you take away the incentive of capitalism where if I work super hard and I have a good idea and I really dream big and I figure it out, that at the end of the day, I'm going to be rich and I'm going to have the white picket fence and everything I've ever wanted you know, respect, uh, uh, money, women, all that good stuff. You know, that's sort of the, you know, quote unquote, the American dream. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, again, it's, it's funny to, to look at a show like this and, and get onto these levels, but I mean, that's, that's the climate, you know, that they mm -hmm. base their entire show. Around. I know that's what's so cool about it. And we can relate to it. Uh, just want to remind folks, if you want to join the discussion, hop on, you got some points or uh, some questions you want to throw at us. Points, um, counterpoints. Yeah, anything. She's uh, so hot. <laughs> Dude, Hop on I, Discord. Weird, I just linked it, the Discord and Monkey Overlord to get you started. It's so funny because, well, not funny. For me, it's like this internal tor tor turmoil. And I don't care if they know it or not. Uh, but I, I find this this girl, whatever her name is, to be insanely attractive. I forget. I think it's Amanda Amanda Crew. Amanda Crew. Yeah. yeah. God, she's fucking hot. Now, I thought she was hot since uh sex drive she was in another movie called sex drive which uh was was kind of a like a road trip euro trip you know <laughs> kind of like quirky like uh american pie type comedy um that's a really funny moments but i thought she was hot since then but as she's gotten older she started to look like my buddy's wife and so i have this really weird feeling when i see her now because i'm like god you're hot god you're sexy but god you look just like my friend's wife <laughs> so it makes it really weird for me these days. Whenever I see her, it's the it's a confusing boner to have for sure. Uh, oh <laughs> my God. I, feel, I feel guilty and, and dirty and sexual and it's wonderful. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't even care if they know. I, I she's, was, she's just hot. You don't think she's hot? I think she's cute. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've, I, I've been watching through some of the earlier seasons of Suits too. And she was in Suits too. I, did, I totally didn't realize that until... Um, but yeah, I think she's cute. Yeah, she. Does that I don't think I don't think I remember in anything else though. Like, is, what else has she been in here? She pops up as like little like side characters or whatever, and this and that. But yeah, typically uh, you don't see her very often. I don't think she's got a lot of accredited stuff. But um, um, no, I think she's actually a pretty. A, I think she does what she does well. Like, I think she's a good supporting. Um, I could never see her like being the the star of a show, you know. But I, I see here as a good uh, uh, supporting character for a lot of things. Like I said, like yeah. Sex Drive as well. She kind of got this that Jennifer Love Hewitt look to her. <laughs> yeah, and I used to. Yeah. yeah, and I used to love Jennifer Love Hewitt. Holy crap! It's sort of unprecedented, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get up and use use the uh, the the bio. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm sorry. Waits. I know. I tried. I tried holding it. Man. Are you I going to masturbate about the girl in the fucking oh, show? I know. Is the timing seems to be very. It would be, a, it would be a lot more pleasant if I was if that was the case, but it's not. I, again, I told you I'm not feeling too well. So. All right. All right I, cool. I'm a I'm we'll a victim of my biology. I'll be right back. She's not in suits. Nice life. She was. She she had a she had a cameo in suits. She was like the daughter of. Uh, one of the clients 
you know, that was hacking. Like she had, she ended up hacking Harvard's uh, computers and, but anyway, she was, she had a cameo in suit. So I just didn't realize that. But Diction, any, any other comments on, I guess the, the show season one or two? I mean, we didn't really talk about the episode so much. Um, the streaming episode I mean, was hilarious. The one where, where they, they had the guy that was trapped in the, uh, the animal thing. <laughs> The zoo or whatever oh, it was. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna drink his own pee. <laughs> oh man, nowadays with a lot Twitch, of the episodes kind of blend together. Then there's the one where uh, Gabe gets trapped in the automatic car and sent to, shipped overseas. Yeah, that yeah, that was freaky actually. <laughs> that. that that would I would have been terrified. I no, I'd get I get claustrophobic, and I would have. I mean, it took me four days. It was like four yeah. days to get that. I think he would have been pretty fucked up when he did, came did back. Did he have water on him? No, you don't have water. You die. He drinking his own pee. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> no. I don't know. That was that was definitely crazy. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other fun episodes. Um, the uh, the mural one that was. That was kind of interesting. Um, I'm kind of looking through some of the, the pics here. Mm -mm -mm. God, I definitely keep getting some of the recent ones mixed up. The episodes uh -huh. or whatever. Let me see. Okay. So where, you know, this is based in Palo Alto, right? Or it's supposed to be yes. based in Palo Alto? Yeah, Palo Alto. Okay. Oh, you know, another thing, too, you know, when they were coming up with the names, you know, that part where he was like, he took all those shrooms or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, <laughs> dude. That episode was, was amazing. So he ended up pulling off into a gas station and going into a, a, a bathroom. I thought he was actually going to just pull over like right that second and, and just start tripping out. But uh, I wonder. There's, there's, I like the I like the attention of detail to Erluck's, um like weed <laughs> chest. Yeah. Like every time he's smoking, his he has got he's got a different bong, and they get more and more elaborate. Oh, I didn't even like, notice that. Really? Yeah. Okay, like he, they, like uh, every episode, I'm pretty sure features Erluck smoking weed, and like more more often than not, he's got some really fucking elaborate ass bong he's doing it with. Dude, how and would... I think it's one of my favorite running gags. It's just like, he, where is he getting this shit? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's getting it from that one organic store, right? But <laughs> yeah, well, no, the weed I, that's that's yeah, all yeah, over yeah, yeah, Northern yeah, California. Yeah. But I'm, yeah. I'm talking about the actual bongs themselves. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I like I, I live near like Berkeley and stuff. There's lots of smoke shops. If you go in there, you'll see some pretty radical like blown glass designs and stuff like that. Kind of defy logic. <laughs> And they're for tobacco, of course. And yeah. They don't actually sell tobacco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love how during the mural scene when they he accidentally opens the garage and he's got that the giant, like uh, whatever that the giant um, what bush or you know the the marijuana like like what you know just the the lab there not the lab but the hy yeah. hydroponic whatever uh, setup there farm yeah it's yeah a little the farm. farm there and how do you not get arrested for that he didn't even get arrested for that. I mean, it's decriminalized Wait, now. Oh, well, I guess I, mean, I guess it's true. I guess you're allowed to grow it there too. Huh? Honestly, like I, I, if you walk around San Francisco, like you just smell weed everywhere now. Like it's like people just they they, they yeah, smoke I guess it you're allowed just it's to like, grow it. Jeez, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, in Florida. Grow, still grow used to. operations are now legal. Yeah. Um, they didn't used to be. They used to like uh, like dispensaries used to get raided all the time, but now they don't. Yeah, yeah. Aren't, aren't you um? Jump! I'm jumping into a conversation. I have no idea the context, but <laughs> about are, you, are you allowed to grow a certain amount yourself? Like I think a there's a there's a plants? cap. I think there's a cap of the amount of the amount you're allowed to grow with your permit. But yes. um, yeah, and obviously, if you don't have a permit, like you can get arrested for that. Yeah, that's what I but, mean. But like, uh, you know. it used to be that even if you had a permit, like the cops would still issue raids on your fucking dispensaries and stuff. But then. Keep it for a couple themselves. more laws got passed, and now it's like they can't do that anymore. Interesting. What 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 was the context of the conversation? Oh, we were so, just talking I mean, about that one episode where the, the murals on the garage, and the cops come by and they're like, "Hey, the neighbors are complaining about the mural," and then they accidentally open up the garage. Right? It's like, "Oh, we'll we'll just get rid of it by opening the garage." And they open the garage, and there's a freaking 
<laughs> giant marijuana you know bush there or whatever there's and there's a up. couple situations that happen legally where they're like like uh jared uh gets arrested we haven't even talked about jared man like jared's like one of the best he's characters funny in yeah he's i good. called him Gabe. Good. i think that's his actual name or no, no, that's no, no, no. In the office it's, office is no, he's, yeah, yeah he's gabe yeah. in the office he, he does have another God. name though right like his real name is something else um, no he doesn't have a real name no he's yeah he's just gabe. <laughs> no no i mean i mean like they, we they call him jared but his name's actually not it's donald, donald. it's donald yeah oh yeah donald they, yeah, yeah they, they give him nicknames <laughs> But there's there's a scene when he's trying to the, do the whole pivot thing. He's like, uh, oh, yeah. you know, like right before TechCrunch, mm -hmm. he's trying to figure out some way to pivot and he hasn't slept and his eyes are all fucking crazy looking. And he's asking people, he's like, what if you had an app to tell you if you could get into heaven or hell? Are you kind of interested, very interested, <laughs> somewhat interested? <laughs> you know, funny. and like eventually he gets arrested because he tells him that he got medication or Adderall off of a kid that he that he had at his house or something like that. Like, cause they asked, like the cops are eventually called on him. There's like a bunch of shit like that that happens that I just kind of like, it's like, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. They're always right. getting in trouble with the, with the law, but it always just kind of gets swept under the rug. A couple of times they'll mention like there's still litigation for things that happened in the past, but it's like, you know, all right, we're a show. We're not going to actually like have these people get arrested or anything, you know? Okay. So the, the biggest question in terms of Jared, is he in love with Richard? Like romantically in love with Richard. Uh, that's an interesting question because you should because yeah. I don't know what season it is. I don't want to give too much away, but Jared is a fucking ladies man. Like Jared gets so much vagina that you don't even know that actually that was part of the joke when he's like, this guy fucks, you know, <laughs> well, he, yeah. pointing at Jared. Well, he actually does like <laughs> yeah. like Jared. Jared's a fucking ladies. Man. He, he, he's and the way he talks about it is like the kindest way to be like get the fuck out you know it's morning time like what are you still doing in my bed kind of stuff you know like that typical guy he's like well you came over and we had a lovely romantic <laughs> evening and we had a coitus but now i'm going to you know like i'm hoping you'll move on and you'll leave and you know like, he'll, he'll, like he's like super nice so does he actually love richard I, it's I, I i think in the I, most i think in the most intense platonic way that you can love a man i don't think it's romantic <laughs> yeah no i think i think it's just he 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 it's he's, admiration he's like, it's a spirit type thing like he just feels like 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 yeah he's but he gets so jealous though he gets super jealous whenever he does yeah you know, richard has another person enter his life that seems to have a similar role as jared and you see characters actually like this pop up a lot recently like uh like if you ever watch veep um gary and veep which is the same guy who plays buster and arrested oh yeah yeah you he's know kind so of in love that, with her yeah like <laughs> he's definitely in love with her but like uh, like these characters that believe in the main character so much they have so much belief in them that they support them so fervently that they, that if anybody like jumps in line to help these people they like get antsy and like they get like eh, they get possessive and obsessive you know God. so we gotta do it, veep at some point that show's fucking amazing gosh, yeah, not, i haven't watched it, a single it episode out. of veep they, so that's a lot I mean, of it's seasons a, it's a long road a because seasons. it actually started off as a british tv show called uh fuck what was it called princes princes no <laughs> It was Prime it, Minister it was real, yeah, it was, Prime Minister assistance. I forget the name of it, but then it was made into a movie called In the Loop. And that is, to, to, in my mind, one of the funniest movies I've ever fucking seen. I've watched it a million times. And then they turned it into Veep. And obviously, it's a really good show that fucking sat, satirizes like politics and government and stuff. But it also, they have specific writers to create the very elaborate insults and swear like words that are used and uh what was one of the more recent episodes of veep that that one government uh like a governor character who's just like the most vulgar person in the show busts into a room and says something along the lines of like i'm sorry to ruin your twinks your twink party hawk scraping each other's esophaguses or something like that <laughs> oh, yeah, and, uh, it was wow. like it was such a fucking wow. like mind-blowingly great like vulgar insult 
And uh, yeah, also Guy Scraper was one of my favorite. Guy Scraper. Scraper. There's a character. So there's tall. A character, yeah. He's so yeah. tall. They just make fun of him. And one of the names they use is Guy Scraper. I'm like, dude, it's so it's so good. We got to talk yeah, about. Yeah, we'll have to do Veep sometime. Um, the, the characters. There's a lot of you see a lot of similar characters actually. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if love is the way that I would go with it. I think he's obsessed. I, I think that yeah. it's, it's like not even just love or ad admiration or anything. I think he's just obsessed with him and helping him it's like if you, I, i've i've never i've never felt this strongly about anybody that i would go to those kind of lengths obviously but have you ever melt so, melt have you ever met somebody that you just felt was uh was just an extraordinary kind of person and you wanted to be around them and you wanted to uh support that person or you wanted to help this yeah. person achieve you know their goals yeah. and stuff like that i feel that way a, a lot about people in in streaming you know like <laughs> you're talking I see about every single streamers. twitch viewer like that's how they feel about their their twitch yeah you know their twitch channel that they've subbed to basically yeah and i i mm -hmm. yeah i totally i totally agree with that sentiment yeah that i mean i didn't really see it that way but now that you say that yeah absolutely mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, I think he's just the extreme version of that. He's just uh, a super fan that also has skills that makes him, uh, you know, worth keeping around and worth, you know, uh, just ha having, being part of the business. And uh, I think that you just see sort of the fan meets technical skill, business partner. And so you get this conglomerate of this, uh, or this collaboration of this character that's just like, very intricate and has a lot of different dimensions I, and is really funny yeah. i i think he's i think he's a really he's probably one of the best characters on there um because if there was one person who i would want to know the backstory to jared is definitely yeah. high up on that list he's yeah, got, he touches he's got, on things every once in a while he's got right? the best yeah. punch lines yeah. in the show too every every time they're having conversations he'll just interject with some really sad fucking fact about himself you know and it's just like and like it, it hits the joke like right on the nose it's like one time i had to sleep with this super old woman but it was totally worth it in the end i don't regret <laughs> it though i don't regret it at all richard <laughs> like, yeah what? yeah what? there's somebody who looks shocked whenever they looked at him he's like yeah. oh i know i have a ghostly figure I'm very skin and bones. My therapist tells me it's very off-putting. You know, like, <laughs> right. so, so I know, I know that I know why you just did that. You know, right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like uh, I don't. Think, I wouldn't say that he's in love. And if he is in love, it's not the kind of love that that you and I would know for like another person. Like, oh, I'm in love with this person. It's just, it's a, it's an obsessed love. If if there is love in there, it's mixed in with all sorts of other fucking feelings and emotions yeah. that it might not be sense. romantic but obsession i think is probably a great word to describe it just because he he's very selfless about it too you yes. know like very very selfless i mean giving up his job to go and help him in the beginning and living and then, in the garage the server room yeah on a cot like <laughs> i mean they treated him like shit during the whole tech crunch thing you know he's like really, left yeah. out of all those things and yeah, he wasn't even there for the presentation. Yeah. He shows up afterwards because yeah, he was arrested. Yeah. That's when he gets arrested. Uh, yeah, he he's um yeah. I mean, he doesn't even pee unless he's told to at the beginning. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he's like he's like, is he like I a would dog? Really like to use the bathroom. Yeah, he's, he's like a like, dog. Yeah, yeah. He's like a super <laughs> the he, dog yeah, of I the show. You, yeah, he is kind of the dog of the show. He's kind of <laughs> he's kind of Richard's dog. If your if your dog could like do accounting and taxes and business stuff. Which I wish I wish I had a dog that could do all that because I'd let him hang out with me too. He's like super super obsessive, super nice, and can do no wrong. And then he could do your taxes and your business shit all at the same time. Like fuck yeah, man! Find me that dog. Then he will be man's best friend. Right now they're <laughs> just kind of like pretty cool to be around. I think dogs are pretty cool. But like man's best friend, you want that title? Do my fucking taxes, dog. <laughs> then we'll talk. <laughs> then we'll talk. So. The, the episode with the streamers, we, me and Nick talked a little bit about just very, very briefly about the, the streaming episode where the guy in the zoo and he falls down, he's stuck there. All right. Yeah. So that went, that episode I thought was super interesting because, you know, they're in this position where it's like, holy shit, we're getting all these viewers and they know where that camera is, right? I mean, they could easily just call the cops and tell them to go and help this dude, right? But they kind of just like let it play out, right? Or am I... Am I 
rem- not remembering something. No, no, I, no, I'm shaking my head. Okay, no, okay, they didn't okay. call anybody. Yeah, because I didn't know, actually I'm get to rewatch this episode. This, I mean, I, I've definitely seen it. I just didn't get a chance to rewatch it this past week. But yeah, so they know exactly where he is, yet they're just like, let's just see how this plays out. And then, you know, obviously the the more viewers come, I mean, this is like very Twitch-like too. I mean, to start hurting like viewers Anytime that it ranks super, super high, right? So he starts bu- busting out the walls, right? He starts busting, like, set up more servers and, like, things are yeah, on fire. Exactly. And, like, it's so exactly. epic, too. And the music, yeah. we haven't even talked about the music in the show. It's fucking great. Like, yeah. it's it's everything you wouldn't you wouldn't think about. And it's all sorts of different types. I mean, there's Shakira. There's, like, rap it's music. Like, like there's a lot, of, there's a lot of, like, yeah, hip-hop yeah, yeah. and rap, yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, when these things are happening like uh you know like these endings of these episodes and stuff it's really epic because they'll have these like crazy like deep beats you know like this like (laughs) you know like that it's like all everything's like oh a new problem you know like and then it goes off into the credits or something but uh i i I don't know i just feel like the music really sets up a lot especially in the scene where he just like that we need more server space and he's busting through the wall <laughs> no, and hook up this wire here and this thing's on fire it's like did we hold did we hold you know it's like almost like a medieval battle you know like it's well like the, the place Alamo. is burning down and they're like yeah the what did we get what burning. was our max concurrence guys <laughs> like did we, did we break our record <laughs> that was crazy yeah uh but but yeah no that that uh that episode was insane it's funny because they never mention not to spoil anything about season three and four but this isn't really a spoiler they never mention that guy ever again the guy that almost died that was like stuck out there like 27 hour 127 hours like uh um what's his name uh fucking uh, guy, what's I forget his, his name no 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 no, no. what's, what's oh, the Jared? movie 120 oh. no 127 oh. hours of philip yeah. i want to say philip franco but that's not no no movie. no james franco <laughs> james yeah franco. james franco that's <laughs> it <laughs> that'd be an interesting movie it was philip franco he's just like spouting off about news and shit while he's trapped in a <laughs> hey you guys rock. i just want to fill you in and he's got a rock <laughs> on, over him like, like trapping him there uh no, no uh yeah anyways so so no they never talk about that guy ever again like he's so not important like this guy's safety and whether he survives or yeah. like he's just he's a tool for getting them further which i thought was even better co- uh commentary on like they're not doing this for the for people right they're not doing this because they really care about people or anything. Yeah. They feel like everyone's a fucking idiot. And this guy, they're willing to like leave out there as long as they need to to prove that they're, <laughs> exactly. they're fucking video. He's going to drink system. his pee. And they're like, they're like waiting for like the, the, for the viewership to like go out of the roof. Can you imagine that on Twitch? <laughs> oh my God. Oh God, man. I feel like Twitch would take it down before it got too far. Yeah, uh, but well, fuck. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that episode. Obviously, when I'm watching it, I'm thinking about Twitch. You know, and like early days of Twitch. It, it would, it could have yeah. lasted for hours, man. Yeah, yeah. There's the picture of it. There's over 140,000 people watching. That. <laughs> well, I mean, imagine that. Like, how many people would watch it on Twitch? I mean, we saw the, we saw kind of the craziness with Ice Poseidon recently, right? And I mean, I feel like with the whole IRL category now um and i mean twitch trying to put uh, obviously a, a cap to it or at least put an end to to the extent of which people can go with with uh you know just the whole in real life um streams but i mean that could potentially have been possible you know or, or could potentially be possible just streaming real life stuff it, it's definitely a gray area for twitch to have to even police you know it's like what can you show what can't you show and and I mean, there's there's some clear lines that I think we all can like, agree upon. But yeah. you know, there's got to be some gray area here, and and it's it's going to be difficult for them to make decisions on. Well, it's it's funny that you mentioned Ice Poseidon because when he was mm-hmm. when he was banned, that was like in his video, that was his biggest complaint is yeah. that he's one of the few people that are actually pioneering the in real life yeah. section, which is extremely true. Mm-hmm. And he says there's no precedence for anything right now. It is all gray area, right? What can you show? What can't you show? And what his point was was that hey, since I'm the guy figuring all this shit out, since I'm presenting you with all these situations where you're having to figure shit out, I'm pioneering the in real life section maybe have a little bit more leeway with the things that I'm doing. You know, he wasn't, I mean, he pushed the line for sure. And uh, especially with the whole airplane thing, I think is detestable. But at the same time, I saw his point that, you know, hey, I'm one of the few guys here in your in real life section that you've created actually figuring out boundaries. You know, don't, don't, 
don't sit here and say, hey, I built this room. There's fires in the room, but we're not going to tell you where the fires are, but go ahead and run in there and play. You know, so when he did go in there and run in there and play, and then he said, hey, there's a fire in the corner, they go, sorry, we're going to have to ban you. We don't allow that fire. You know, like that yeah. kind of thing. It's like, it's it's weird. It's a weird situation. But yeah, it definitely reminisces over into uh, into the show for sure when that scene comes up with him fucking stuck in that fucking place. <laughs> Can't be helicoptered out <laughs> drinking his own piss. You know, I, I don't... I. It, Twitch will figure it out eventually, but yeah, no, especially early days of Twitch back when like, it was almost like, it's, it's almost like everything is crazier when it first starts, you know, and then all the other stuff comes in and, and, and edits and everything like look at UFC, you know, like the UFC at the oh, beginning was God. just like fat guy versus skinny guy, you know, judo versus karate and you know, like it was just those are awesome know, days, man. Crazy. Yeah, those are fucking heavyweights versus like <laughs> featherweights. It was yeah, freaking crazy. It was, like, it was crazy. Oh and um and uh they learned from that, obviously, and now they have weight classes and it's all sanctioned and everything like that. But like there's a certain amount of uh uh charm and mystique about uh about starting out something brand new and not knowing the rules, right? Mm -hmm. And that's sort of what Twitch was. So I can see where this situation would definitely pop up in real world uh where we're all watching this poor fucking sap as he needs rescue and just viewing his entertainment <laughs> it's also a commentary on people in entertainment too like what we're entertained by you know like we're kind of disgusting in that way you know that we I want to see like murder like murder mysteries and stuff like that we watch that shit for entertainment 13 reasons why a show about suicide for kids ultimately it's about entertainment we're watching that, you know, like we want to be entertainment. We're not watching that like it's a documentary or lifetime special or something like we're going to learn something. It's fucking entertainment. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, what people like to watch so. train wrecks and that's literally a train wreck, you know, like having having to down their car when they see a car wreck. I know. Of the highway. Exactly. I'm not judging. I've seen some crazy shit on the Internet and I don't regret most of it. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> but but, uh, you know, I can't judge. But, yeah, no, I mean, uh, uh, again, it's just another thing where mm -hmm. this, this show dabbles in real life, which is what makes it funny. That's what makes comedy funny. Yeah, especially our lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Anything else you guys want to say about the show? We can talk about next week. Or yeah, let's go ahead. Whenever, I think whenever it is, whenever we're going to do our next show. Dismantle this one pretty, pretty yeah. heavily. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll at least put a lid on Silicon Valley Season 1 and 2 for, for now. We'll probably do 3 and 4 at some point. But next week, we're going to be going back to doing a movie, and it's going to be movie. Wonder Woman. That's a... we're such we're such a bunch of nerds man like we can't stray far from like the superhero movies or like i know right it's like, <laughs> come on it's this like looks awesome go out on our, I mean, it does, no it does look awesome it does look awesome i'm just saying like with us it's like we, we we're like willing to go and like do something different or do a show or do like it but we always got to come back to our like <laughs> our like relevant now movies you know like our superhero <laughs> movies like the ones we feel like we can't skip it's you our know? core competency man we can't yeah help yeah, it. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I feel like I'm going to have a lot to say about this uh, one way or the other. So um, I, I feel like I'm going to bring some things to the table here, but I'm yeah. excited. Wonder Woman's never been, I think I explained this last yeah. time or last show is that I love female uh, protagonists and uh, I just never got behind Wonder Woman for whatever reason. I, I just never thought she was that great. Is, but the, it's been getting great reviews. It's got like 96% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, no, like, what I was going to say is that it looks really good in movie format. Like I, I, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm sort of excited about seeing it, which sort of excited for me about seeing a superhero movie is like, unfathomable so, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, not exact. so the yeah. question is will she have an invisible jet in this movie <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure the invisible jet doesn't show up okay and everything else okay is, is i think I'll, that that as long as that's not there because it takes place happy. in world war one so they didn't even they they wouldn't have had the technology to make an invisible, <laughs> invisible jet, biplane <laughs> right. dude it's 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 such lazy animation. They just have them sitting in the it's air. Not... Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a feeling because they they definitely are going to do a sequel, and they said it's going to be in uh, contemporary times. If they do the jet, you know they're going to do some like stealth technology thing where it like reflects the surface of clouds and shit, and like it looks super awesome. It's like the carrier. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But then like yeah. they, they kind of did that already in the Avengers with yeah. the with the helicarrier thing. So it's kind of like how are they going to make it look different? I don't know. They can't just straight up have 
Gal Gadot like sitting in the middle of nothing. Just like, <laughs> that would be so funny. Man, I totally, I totally <laughs> forgot about the invisible gen until you just until you just said that. Ridiculous. I completely <laughs> forgot about that and how fucking ridiculous that is. Uh <laughs> Uh, what are okay? So let's just real quick before we move on and we do our you know outro thing. What are her powers again? Okay, let's. She's super strong, like super she's strong. Got superhuman abilities, right? Like this yeah. agility. Her her, her, her the arm, metal her the metal on her yeah. wrist uh, can arm deflect bands. bullets and stuff. Okay, yeah. Why? And then it, the they're, they're infused the, or godlike or something, right? Like she's, a, she's an Amazonian. They're all descendants of Zeus and and uh, Hera, I believe. Mm. Okay. I, I know Zeus so this is, is the coolest part. Zeus I don't even know the background either. So this is yeah. She's, cool. she's got she's got uh she's got the whip, the lasso, got, right? The, the yeah. lasso of truth. Yeah. If she if she wraps that around you, you have to tell her everything you know. Basically. Oh, see, now I didn't do that. I'm glad I asked. It. So mm -hmm. if it, it, I didn't know that. So if she lassos you, you have to tell the truth. Yeah. That's why they call it the lasso. It's like so, it's, it's like it, sodium pentothal. It's also <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, the, there's also additional power to the rope though right in lasso or, or no i believe so i don't know all the it looked like it in the previews at least that the last yeah i mean powerful. it's a fucking badass whip that she can use to smack these around and yeah. probably you know like like move. i she used it a couple times in, in batman v superman so she can uh, die she can die right she can't die she's not immortal okay. yeah she's okay. a, She's like a demigod. She's a descendant of gods. She's like Hercules before he went back to Olympus. Kind of. Yeah, exactly. It's like she, she, yeah. she's got she's got human Her and yeah. godlike uh, genes in her, I believe. Gotcha. Well, it looks it looks pretty good. And I like the setting that it's not current day. I like that it's sort yeah. of back in back in the day. So that'll be exciting to watch. That'll yeah. be good. So guys, go watch it this week. Meet us back uh, next week. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think next week we'll be. I don't know. You guys back next week, right? Thursday? We're going to go yeah, back yeah, to our yeah, normal day. Should be good. I was looking at E3 time. Yeah, E3 so. is the, E3, the following week. I don't believe skip that week. Day, whatever, yeah. the following week. Yeah, we'll probably have to skip that week. But You know what I noticed about our cameras? Now, I look super light, and Diction looks normal now. Diction was looking well, super I adjusted light your, earlier. I, I adjusted your... Uh, I, no, I, actually, I, oh, I, you messed with it? Oh, okay. They, like, I did this. I'm like looking at my email, and now will read it. Ah, okay. I have I switched on dark mode. I adjusted so. your lighting earlier, too, because you're, you're too dark. Hello. So, don't don't <laughs> fucking get, adjust my so lighting. Mad at not me, you. Man. Not I you, sit in dark, oh. man. I just want to sit in darkness. It's like, oh, I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap up. Do some shout outs. Great episode, guys, as always. Uh, Addiction, where can people find you? Hi, you can find me at twitch.tv slash eatmydiction1. I'll be on later tonight, 7.30 p.m. for Fucked Up Friday. All Get right. drunk and play some party games. Sweet. Hello? That's it. That's all I got. Uh, Cora and Junie are gone for like at least a week, <laughs> so I'm here all by myself. So tomorrow morning we start streaming, and we'll just stream forever. I have no other responsibilities. I think okay. I keep saying this, but I think I'm finally going to jump into GTA 5 RP. It's one of those oh things god, that, like, so oh my good. god, wow. Okay. I know I'm going to have fun doing it, but like the the weird hipster part of me, or like the, like, I don't know, like, it's like, oh, of course I'm going to jump into it now that it's so popular. It's like, I'm so bandwagon y right now. But like I'm just it's gonna... a good bandwagon. Like, people love watching that shit. If you if you're if you're good at like role play. Like I got into it and I was terrified. I was like, I'm afraid I'm gonna break one of the rules or yeah, my that's what I'm not scared of. Yeah, and yeah. then my first time, I streamed it for seven hours straight, and people were fucking loving it. And so the only problem is that like I don't know what server you're trying to get it on. Like if it's not populated, you're not gonna have fun. Like you get the, they only have 24 slots because of the NPCs and and all that stuff. So if it's not at least like moderately full, you're gonna have no one to role play with. Oh, and it's gonna be that's boring. Sick. Yeah. 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 Like I was I, trying to stream it the other day and like one of the two servers I'm whitelisted on was full. And then for some reason, even though in the Discord, like just like like over a hundred people, no one wanted to fill the slot in the second server. So it was like nothing I could do. I had to play Friday the thirteenth, boohoo, but like I had like ideas <laughs> of stuff. I had like I I I have story arcs going with a couple of characters right. and stuff, you know, that I wanted to fulfill and, and explore. And it was kind of a bummer. I'll, I'll, okay. I'm definitely going to check it out. If not tomorrow morning, then then sometime this week. I, I just want to just finally just go, okay, we're doing it this morning. Like, I don't yeah. give a fuck what happens. We're going to do it. Right. Um, and I, I look back at, like, I used to run, like, an improv group in my college and stuff like that. It's just, all I see is it's just, like, you're just watching improv. It's just, like, video game yeah. improv. 
is, it's, is if you've ever done like tabletop RPG or improv or any theater, it's like you'll be a natural easily. Okay. And people that don't, have no experience with that are streaming it and do it just fine, and they're growing their their skill sets at, at improv. You know, nice. That's cool. I think it would be good. I think it would be definitely good. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing this week. Chan, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, you can follow all of my shows, which I do shows in Overwatch and Hearthstone, as well as this one on youtube.com slash chanmanv. Just all the VODs are there. Uh, you can watch some of those live on my Twitch stream, which is also chanmanv. And follow me on Twitter, too, at chanmanv. Everything's chanmanv, surprisingly. <laughs> but, uh, coming up this weekend, just not too much this weekend, but next week we'll be doing likely another streamer showdown for Hearthstone. So if you're into Hearthstone and, and want to check that out, you can check probably check that on tuesday which i'll be announcing soon you guys will get the first word on it just a few of you guys <laughs> but uh that's gonna be it though oh for i forgot to mention that you guys can listen to us on itunes as well as google podcasts and soundcloud uh if you guys want to you know just put us on on your car on the way to work or anything like that uh just look up spoiler alerts on itunes if you like the show leave us five star review helps folks find it when they're, they're trying to find us because it's not Easy finding spoiler. Spoiler alert's probably not the best SEO term to use. <laughs> but, you know, it's what we chose. So it's all good. Uh, that's going to be it, though, for this week. For E My Diction, Elohim, and myself, Champion V. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.